Hello friends! Today is Monday, January the 22nd, and I have a little Happy Mail yarn unboxing to show and share with you. This literally just arrived at my door. It's around, what time is it? It's around two o'clock in the afternoon. And that little thing you have on top here is just me practicing a little moss stitch, <laughs> but it's there just to cover some addresses up. And my yarny bestie, Crystal, from Ricola's Crochet Corner, who already more than spoiled me <laughs> with my 12 days for last Christmas, um, sent me some yarn. And I'm gonna let you look at it when I do. Let me just clean. Oh good, it's still hiding. Oh my goodness, there's more yarn in here. Okay, so she's really surprising me. Oh my goodness, there it is. But let's look at this first. Okay, the label's popping off this one. It's a blossom cake. The label was a little bit off that one, but that's a blossom cake. It's gorgeous. I've never worked with those yet. And she sent me, oh my goodness, more of this. I just made my mother a sweater out of this yarn. It's Karen Kellerama Halo in, which one is this one? Starlight Frost. And there's another one down here. Ooh, this is a different one. And this one is in, silver and gold very interesting thank you crystal and this is what she actually told me she was sending me the red heart oh my goodness i'm dropping things i'm so excited the red heart all-in-one grain square yarn so this has been very hard to come by in canada unless you um got on the bandwagon first of all it feels nice and soft to me um definitely softer than some other red hearts i've tried and there is two colors in here i saw the center pull right away on that one not so much on this one, but I've heard from people they're pretty evident. Oh, there it is. So there you go. So center pull, center pull. And down here, center pull. Uh, I think Crystal got on the bandwagon right when Yarn Inspirations first came out with this yarn. And she told me she had to send me some because she knows how much I love grannies. So I'm going to have to start playing with it now and see what happens. I think because there's two of these, I'm going to start with this one here and see what's gonna happen. I have watched so many videos of people unboxing and grabbing this yarn. Um, I guess lots of people were getting great deals from Joann's in the States where they could uh, get it on sale and then add coupons to it. Uh, I've seen some projects done with um, the actual granny square from the pattern. I've seen some projects done with people's own version of granny squares. Um, like it's still just a regular granny square, but just their way of doing it, not the label re uh, recommended pattern. And I've seen some African violet squares. I've seen some sunburst squares. I've seen blankets done in this yarn, moss stitch, was, which is what got me thinking about the moss stitch. I will link a few of the videos I watched in the description box of this video. But this video is gonna basically be all about this yarn here. Um, I'm gonna come back and I am gonna let you know what happened when I tried to work with it. Hello. I can't believe I'm gonna try and do this. First of all, my 5.5 millimeter hook is missing because it's in another project that now that I've got this slightly balanced, I'm not gonna go grab. But I am gonna do um, what I'm supposed to do for the pattern, which I've been hearing for so long, I pr practically know in my head at this point. I'm supposed to leave a four inch tail, not counting the white, it's about there. And I'm just gonna try this with the six millimeter. Again, I'm doing it because uh, I'm fully expecting I'm gonna need my seven. So I'm still way short for myself on this. And I'm gonna give it a go. One, two, three, four, chain four, says the pattern. And then create a ring. Oh, there it is, now I can see the timer. Okay, so a second ago, I didn't think I had this recording, but it is. So back to where we were. Two, three, four. Um, I prefer um, the chained ring for granny squares because I've had some come apart um, and I attributed it to the magic circle. So it just, it's a bit of a less of a hassle. Like you can still use magic circle, no problem, but make sure you try, you get that end a, a little bit longer than you might think and uh, really weave it in. Make sure you have a knot in there somewhere uh, to make sure they're not going to come undone. Anyway, it's a little bit of a rant. Um, one, two, three. Um, oh, shoot. I forgot. I'm going to do this their way. So any craziness you're seeing here is you can attribute it to the fact that I'm so excited to be trying this yarn. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, based on the number of videos I've watched, I already know that I don't like this granny square. For the same reason most people are saying, uh, it's very wide loop here, uh, which I'd never choose to have. Oh, and the other thing is too, I really agree with people about pulling the yarn out because the yarn itself, when it's first new like this, it's providing a lot of tension on the yarn. So if you're, if you're trying to work to a certain gauge, which this pattern requires you to do, um, then you're going to set yourself up for failure unless you have 
um, even tension throughout the entire thing. Um, and I mean, you know, it's a trade-off, right? Because you're not gonna have to do any ends, except your beginning and your end, <laughs> pardon the pun. But um, in order to accomplish that, you need to have your, your project working the same way all the time. And um, it's not as easy as we think. I have some um, half double crochet uh, blankets that in the past have looked pretty wonky at the end and I know that's because of me pulling on it and because of my tension varying throughout the project and all of all of this talk about this yarn has done for me has really made me think about that part um, so there's my three so I have to change three chain three and then do three more Ooh, of course um, trying to film myself doing this it's a awkward and B whenever someone comes to your computer and they're looking over your shoulder you always mess things up more right chaining three Trying to keep my hands low. And here we go. I'm gonna just, anytime, anytime I don't have anything to say, I'll just speed the video up so you don't have to sit there and wonder what I'm doing, but I can uh, safely say I'm gonna be changing hooks in a second anyway, just from the inadvertent practice I did by using, um, by doing Jada's calendar blanket. All right, so one, two, three. This is acting as one double crochet. I chain three and I come back over here and I do two more double crochets. One and two. So there is not that much yarn left um, considering, right? So let's pull it out and let's jump to a seven. I don't wanna waste your time. And like I said, if I hadn't started that project on the weekend, I probably wouldn't have known to try this first, but there's a few people that have been using different hook sizes of what I've seen though. Uh, there's several people that are getting the granny squares to work for them no problem i've seen a lot of that which is great um i just didn't like uh people talking negatively about the yarn if they didn't bother to look that there was a pattern for this square on the label like in order to have it work out every single time there would have to be right and um also just like i, I don't understand why anyone would be comparing red heart super saver to anything but like like yarns because it, it we know what it is <laughs> You know it's red heart super saver yarn so um i don't know I, I was starting to feel like there was a lot of negative nellies out there and we don't need negativity in our crafting we just need our fun i actually think i might chain another um chain and join with a a ring of five instead of four but anyway one two three four five six and here we go okay so i'm just gonna do this with my hook and i'm gonna speed this all up for you to see it i'm not gonna talk during it and we'll talk about it when it's done okay So I have three shells done, one, two, three. I have my original start, so I have to do two more double crochets to complete the last shell in the very beginning round. And this is what I don't like about this pattern. I know that this part here is only gonna get worse because I don't like how that looks as the third double crochet, which is why I wanna do my own way. But first we had to work with the yarn and look, it's right there. Um, so I am not displeased by that at all. So I'm gonna slip stitch there and I'm gonna chain one. Um, so actually, I think the best case scenario would be if you had maybe a slip stitch to join. For the amount of yarn I have left, I would never do this because I would never use a chain three, but anyway, a uh, slip stitch to join and then slip stitch just so that the uh, purple is what's showing, not that beautiful um, claret color or burgundy color. So I'm, I'm off again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and double crochet. Okay, I'm going to just let this speed by now. Okay, so I'm very close. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit because I really chained loosely there. Looser than I would normally if I wasn't holding, <laughs> trying to hold this around the, the recording device I'm using. And I have two more double crochets to do here. Now this is what I don't like about the pattern. 
it doesn't feel like it's in the corner at all. Like the way that this works, it doesn't feel like it's in the corner. It feels like this should be maybe like the middle double crochet. Um, that's what I don't like about that. This square, it's got nothing to do with the yarn. It's the square that was designed to be used with the yarn. Look, I'm right there. So if I just, again, if I wasn't crocheting around my tripod, my mini tripod here, for the first time ever, I might add, that would not even have happened. One, try again, two, okay. And there's some, um, what do you call it? Little, um, whatever this is, bleeding into the yarn here. So I'm not even too concerned about it on this round. Um, and like, it's just so bizarre. <laughs> Like, look how wide that one looks compared to all the other ones. I really just don't like the square. So I'm not having any issue getting engaged with this pattern with my seven millimeter hook. And um, I'm not sure if I said this before. Thank goodness for editing. So I can take it out if I did. But having as much trouble as I did with Jada's January square to get to eight inches told me a lot about this process. Everybody has to end up with a six inch square, regardless of what hook you're using you're gonna get a six inch square. That's the only way the yarn's gonna work. So like, I don't know, I, I, my mind has changed so much about this yarn since I first heard it come out. Um, I was appalled by the price point on your inspirations when it came out in December. I, I was really not liking that you had to follow a pattern. And I was like, well, of course you have to follow a pattern. I mean, it's not like I can expect to make my octos if I don't follow the pattern. <laughs> so anyway, and I, and I have gone, I've watched all kinds of people that I didn't even realize were around on YouTube. Uh, I found a really great lady that does blankets and different things with this yarn that I'll be linking in the description box of this video. Anyway, ultimately, if I didn't mind the granny square, I would continue. I'm going to try my way and see how much fudging I have to do to get the square that I like making. Okay, let's start over. Oh, also, I know people are going to be asking. So a long time ago, I realized I was rubbing this part of my hand a lot with my hook. Uh, I don't think I do it as much as I used to, but I'm in the habit of having that part of my hand covered. So I just make myself some little wraps out of cotton. And then when I was making a, a blanket, I think, for my dad and my stepmother, um, I was really pulling on the blanket yarn and it created a burn on my finger. And once that happened, it started happening with all different kinds of yarn. So for a long time, I used tape and then I found these. I think they're meant to be for people who play um, sports to, I don't know, support their fingers or whatever. Um, this does create extra tension on the yarn because it's pulling across a fabric. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm uh, looking at things like gauge, which until this yarn, I really didn't concern myself very much about gauge, but it's just teaching me a lot about other projects. Anyway, that's what's on my hands. <laughs> And also, pardon the manicure, it could be used to be done over again. Anyway, let's try this again. So about four inches, I'm not gonna be too worried about it at this point. Um, and I'm gonna do how I would start a granny square project. So chain five and slip stitch to join. Did I chain five? Two, three, four, yeah, I did. I wanted to make sure I got that extra one in there. Okay, now a lot of people are complaining they don't like the chain because you can't close up your squares. As long as you crochet over your end, your and if your end is in front, it works better than if your end is behind, but either will work. You can close up your circle fairly easily um, without trying too hard, but you can also sew it in under the stitches if you really needed to, uh, to, to tighten it up finally, um, uh, just underneath them in the circle and it'll tighten it up. So anyway, it's here now and I'll try pulling on it in a minute for you just to show you. One, two, three. So I start with a modified double crochet by just chaining one and double crocheting into the ring. I've been doing that since I learned it from Crystal at Bag of Day years ago, as much as possible. Occasionally, some patterns I will use a stacked, uh, stacked single crochet. Uh, for this one, I'm just gonna try the regular double crochet. And we're gonna chain two here, and we're gonna double crochet three times. And this is the one I'm more interested in. Um, it's hard for me to be patient enough to do a full square in their pattern because I don't like their pattern. So I'm going to try and be patient enough to learn to do it my way. And we'll see what happens. Okay. And also I think somebody said that it's a really good idea to pull your yarn out and to keep an eye on where you're at. Um, because I think that, you know, it might not be perfect from skein to skein. So, oh, here we go. That's just sitting like that. So even just right now, look how much smaller I can make it if I want to. And I'll do it again when I'm finished, but um, I don't mind the reason to not do a chain uh, start on a granny for me has nothing to do with it being closed enough in the center and in fact I don't mind it being open sometimes because it mimics the corners to me anyway there's lots of options right one two and three more doubles um, I'm sure you'll be seeing some words on the screen as well because I tend to babble sometimes okay so that wasn't bad uh, I still have to chain two one two I want my um chain two to be in burgundy for sure hope I didn't raise that too much up I would prefer this slip stitch to be in burgundy, but I'll live with it in the purple. 
Oh, and also I'm doing yarn unders a lot of times if I want it to be tight now. I, I, was, I saw something on Instagram all about yarn under and yarn over, and I definitely want it to be in the purple when I'm turning here because it'll show a lot less because this shell is going to be purple. And did you see that? My little subtle, I'm turning. Yes, I like turning my granny squares. I like the texture it gives to have um, each row or each round be a different direction. That's how I like doing my granny squares. And speaking of my granny squares, rather than just sit here and you watch me crocheting, um, I don't really ever make um, granny squares that are one round in, of color. And so this yarn is very exciting to me from that standpoint too. Uh, I, I would make solid granny squares. I would make, um, you know, two round granny squares or two rounds and then three rounds and then go from there type granny squares. But I would always mitigate the ends by, by choosing not to change color every round. So the fact that this is gonna let me do that is a big plus to me if I can get the pattern to work. Um, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's how I've always done it. Um, Crystal calls me the granny square queen, which I don't know, I think there's people that are far more adventurous and interesting about their granny squares than I am, but I do love it. I love granny stitch in general. Um, so, you know, this just opens me up to a different option. Um, if, if also like one of the things I'm looking at here is how much does it look like I have left? so that I can get used to what that looks like. I, I wanna get used to what it looks like when it's gonna, when I need to do one more shell. Um, chain two, and let's see here. I think I have more than I need, that's what I'm guessing. Oopsie, oopsie. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, so I have about one double crochet's worth more than I need on this round, which isn't terrible. Uh, I've been talking, you know, it's hard to concentrate on everything at once, so I'm just gonna go back to here and be a little bit looser about it. It's possible that I will stop wrapping my yarn there on my pinky and I'll probably just put it over that if I start noticing that it continually I have too much. Um, I play with tension anyway, so if, if something's ending in a corner to corner, let's just get away from granny squares for a sec, and I don't like where the color choice is, choice is coming up on the corner to corner, I will, um, you know, go back and tighten up a bunch of stitches if I need to, or, you know, go back and then loosen up a bunch of stitches if I need to, just to get it to fall where I want it to fall. How are we doing? We're close this time. I'm going to pull this red yarn out now so that I don't keep moving the camera as much. It'll be interesting to see whether you guys get to see this or not because I'm going to base it on how wobbly the video is. Uh, did I change color again yet? Those two are close. Yeah, this is another color. Those two are really close. There it is right there. Two, three, chain, one, slip. I'm not going to do my little tight slip stitch this time because I actually want to use up more yarn. And there, that's pretty good. All right, so on this round, I'm gonna crochet a little looser. Um, in terms of wrapping my yarn, I was taught to crochet this way. I was taught at 13 years old to wrap my yarn around there and wrap my yarn around my finger. So it's it's um, it's not like I knew I had any other choice. So it makes so much sense that depending upon how you hold your yarn, um, you will have more tension on your yarn. I've actually tried from seeing other people, like Mikey, I think sometimes he just hang hangs his over his hand. I don't know if he catches it in his pinky just like that, but, um, like, I don't, I can't pick up the yarn just because of how, for so many years um, before I found YouTube and before I knew that there was any other way to do it, I always did it this way. And I also um, do this weird thing with my hand that I don't even know what it is, but it's feeding my yarn. So uh, anyway, we're uh, getting, I'm babbling. So let's just go here. One, two, three. So if I was going to be really picky, I, I prefer that, you know, that was red, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Uh, I like unique yarns. I like yarns that have speckle in them. A lot of the Karen cakes have speckle in them in different spots. So it's not going to bother me. This actually reminds me, this yarn, of Karen Big Cakes. It's just a little bit different than Karen Big Cakes, but I do like this yarn. There's nothing about the actual yarn itself that bothers me other than the price. Oh yeah, that's something I wanted to mention too. So we are starting to see it here in Canada in Walmart. Um, my mom and my brother were at Walmart the other day and it was coming up as if um, they had some at the Walmart they were at and they looked for me and they did not find any. Um, and hubby is off um, doing some errands and he is going to check for me at a different Walmart. So um, on his way home from work, probably one day this week, I don't know what day he's gonna check, but he's gonna check as well. And also finally, this is all in Canada, by the way, the actual online um, listing is there, but almost all of them are saying out of stock except for a couple of colors. So um, all of a sudden one day last week, I noticed that it started to say that you could get them in store at Walmart, but um, it didn't appear you actually could. You could put it in your cart and then it would kind of disappear sort of thing. Um, anyway, we are off on a hunt for some of this yarn, providing I like it, but so far so good. Um, we'll see. 
uh, they're charging $11.67, which is the same price they charge for the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and the Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo at our Walmarts here in Canada. And I'm expecting that I'm not the only one who's been stocking the yarn, so we'll see um, what it's like when people actually can get a hold of it. Also, a lot of yarns for Walmart, they come directly from Spinrite, so um, I don't want to end up with a mess there. I'm going to trust myself to see that color change and take my little reminder out here. Um, a lot of yarns that you, when you order them from all, from Walmart.ca in Canada, they'll tell you you have to you have to select a minimum of three, and um, that's because it's being shipped by Spinrite directly. I've gotten several boxes over the years from Walmart that's come directly from Spinrite, um, rather than from like a Walmart, um, rather than like from a Walmart warehouse. So I guess that's part of the reason that you have to do at least three minimum. Chain one. Okay, so I don't know if I actually said. I am doing um, chain twos in the corners and chain one in between my shells, and I am turning every round. So that is the way I always do my granny squares, unless there's a reason for me not to change direction. So occasionally, if I'm doing bigger granny squares, like I've done for um, the Bernat pop blankets I've done in the past, because I want the color to go all the way around as far as it can go, I have not changed directions on those. But uh, oh, I changed the color change right there. This is a hard one to see. So that is definitely manageable. I can just pull this shell back, tighten the shell up, and it will be where it needs to be. I was very close on that one. This is so exciting. I mean, I don't think I would be having nearly as easy time with this if it wasn't for all of the uh, watching of the videos I had done in advance. And then just something clicked for me when I was practicing uh, Jada's square for the, Jan for the January square for the, oh, I'm still short. It's actually changing there. So let me see here. This shell is very loose. I don't know if I'm going to get a whole granny, a whole double crochet out of it though. But I still am not that frustrated considering I do this all the time in blankets. I rip them back. I'm going to rewrap the yarn um, the way I normally do and just do this one here. Um, I do this all the time in crochet. Like if, if, if I can have the color change in a slightly different spot because I like the way it looks aesthetically more, I'll just pull back a few stitches and fix it. So this is not going to be a deal breaker for me. I know a lot of people are frustrated with that, but and also I think it'll get easier. I've heard a number of people say they get easier the further into the skein you get. That makes sense to me because the yarn won't be under its own um, tension as much as the further into it you get. So now I should be good there, I think. That one can be, yeah, I'm perfect. So there's my chain one. There's the top of this. I'll do a nice tight one because I already am into the yarn and then flip. So again, like we're talking about this yarn, so Try not to go too off topic, but this is always how I do my um, granny squares. So I don't mind changing just in the middle of the round and starting from there with just the chain one and double crochet. So now I'm right in between whether I need the yarn wrapped or not wrapped. I'm gonna pull this out. What do you think, Crystal? I'm doing all this videoing for you. <laughs> I think she uh, finally broke into her yarn over the weekend and tried a couple of things with it. I don't think she's too keen on the granny square part. So there's the white. And the other thing I'm planning to do is really tighten up on my last round. I've seen people saying that they don't feel like they have enough yarn to, to tie in, um, or like to tie in their ends with. So I'm gonna tighten up on my last round because I would do that normally on the last round of a granny square anyway. Often on my last round of granny squares, I take out um, the chains and that works fine because I've been taught to believe that the chains are only spacers. They're not really part of a stitch, which works really well for how I crochet because obviously I'm a very tight crocheter if I need to use a a, a seven millimeter hook for this pattern um but um i like the um i like whenever i'm joining for the chain stitch to be gone and having a, um, actual stitches to sew together or um crochet together depending on how i de decide to join squares and um i like how it tightens up the edge krista from secret yarnery is always saying about you know nice nicely tightening up edging for blankets and things like that with borders and i think it applies that you can apply it wherever you need to apply it but yeah i like for it to have a little less give on blankets for sure. And um, even for most wearables, you're gonna want um, the edging to be a smidge tighter. So I'm gonna let this go again and see if I get all the way around. If I talk less, maybe my tension will be more even. I think even at um, double speed here, you can see that I keep struggling to get my stitches to go. My arms are really sore trying to hold them differently because of the camera. 
So it was really affecting how um, I crocheted on the fourth and fifth rounds of this square. Um, and this is future me telling you that things got way better. And at this point, um, at night, I have four squares done. Yay! Oh, I made it. Barely. Okay. So it looks like I'm slip stitching with my... Oh, I have to chain one still. I'm going to tighten that up. I can get a chain one out of this. <laughs> one, two. Oh, another thing I really like about um, the um, idea of this yarn is, like, when we go away, I end up taking so much yarn with me because I don't know what I want to make. And I can always convince myself to make a grainy square. So not only can I bring less yarn by far, but I can bring a really colorful project, which I love having on vacation, you know, anytime. But um, yeah, I think that that part's gonna be extremely handy. Okay, I'm going to um, do this last round quickly and um, let you speed through it. I'm just gonna have quite a bit of yarn here but this one for sure I would have to sew it in on the burgundy so measurements this is the most important part to me not necessarily the rest of it so I'm gonna flip my square over and I'm gonna take my measuring tape I'm actually gonna take my pink one because that one's a little wonky from being overused I'm gonna flip her over and I hook up here for you and okay so with this measuring tape, it's measuring about six and a quarter inches. So it should be six inches, which means I can crochet tighter than I was. So that's kind of good to know as I keep going through these. Um, this yarn and I are gonna get along just fine. <laughs> I know it's gonna take a little bit. There's gonna be a learning curve, obviously, with any new product there would be, um, but we're gonna get along just fine. Um, once I get used to using it and um, not trying to think about so many things at the same time and also not trying to record it, um, but I will continue on this Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square journey and I will report back what my findings are after. But so far, so good. I'm super happy to have some. Thank you so much, Crystal, for spoiling me and sending it to me. And um, I will see if Walmart opens up and we can get some on our own. And uh, this is kind of uh, some Christmas money I had set aside. I'm going to spend some on this Granny Square yarn and uh, then that'll be that for a little while because I do not want to uh, really increase the stash at all but uh, I'll wait and see um, what the sale prices start to look like on this yarn. But one downside for it only being available in Walmart in Canada is that we next to never get any sales on yarn at Walmart. And so I may have to keep uh, yarn inspirations in mind for if they're offering any good deals. But uh, yeah, I'm interested in it for sure. Um, it will be fun to make some blankets for Project Linus with this yarn and what other things I can think of getting up to. Anyway, I'm really glad I tried it. And for me, I can crochet the regular way I do for granny squares if I use this hook. Seven milli. Hey everyone. Today is Tuesday, January the 23rd, and I managed to get four granny squares done yesterday evening. The first one is here. It also has the shortest tail. 
I did pull it back one more time to get that to fix up. And with relatively no finagling, I was able to get those done. I think I was having quite a bit of trouble um, with my tension, just trying to crochet around my tripod for the first time yesterday. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to come back and say, um, it's a yes for me on this yarn. I like it and I don't mind working with it. So the stickler for me will just be the price point at $11.67 in Canada from Walmart which is our only other option than your inspirations. I'm gonna be pretty picky about my purchases, but um, there's a lot of positives for me. Coming up with some projects that are um, full of color is another big one. So um, I'm planning to play with some of it. Um, this is a very dark burgundy color, a claret color that is in the middle here, and I have that in sparkle. So I plan on playing with some trim colors. I wouldn't mind picking up this color. It's showing a bit blue. It's an odd color. I don't know if I want to call it blue, periwinkle, um, but I might pick up this color as a border color. So I'm not necessarily going to leave them just as they come out of the skein, but I'm going to play with them and I will continue to let you know how it goes for me. Okay, friends, that's it for this video. A special granny square video. Red heart all in one granny square is a yes for shell. Have a great day and happy crochet, friends.